you go to a classical art museum and there's a horse in it, it's always the best part of the painting. Like, I feel like I wasn't the only one who enjoyed painting horses that much. Like, all these other painters enjoyed painting as much as I did, you know? Every part of painting that fucking horse is, like, the most fun I can have, <laughs> you know? It's like, they're, they're, and here's the thing, too, they're so masculine, you know? And I have so much self-consciousness about making work that is so masculine, because my work is. And I think in certain circles, that's kind of unfashionable, and I can't unknow that. And it's like, you know, the choice is either you, you find something like a horse that you can put all your masculine energy into, or you deliberately walk away from it and not paint horses because you're afraid of how you're going to be perceived. And I, like, the horse is like, it's freedom. It's like a way to like, be exactly what I am for better or worse and put it into a beautiful creature, you know? <laughs> So as far as I can remember, I was always uh, making art. Um, I actually had a twin in kindergarten. Uh, his name was Brandon and we were both born on the same day and we were the two talented kindergarten artists. So uh, I could draw a person that wasn't a stick figure and he could draw a castle. So it was natural that he should draw the castles and I should draw the population living in the castle. And that's, how we, that's how I got started. I always wanted to be an artist for as long as I can remember, so I was always, uh, I played soccer too, so I was, growing up I was like either going to be the soccer player or, or the artist, but I wasn't actually that good at soccer, so art won by default. It is a job, I mean it certainly is, um, there's a, you know, everything from in terms of like what I, what I, what art shows I, I decide to go to, and certainly deadlines are normal. So I actually really like deadlines. I like knowing that I'm gonna have something coming up in a few months and I've got this much time every day to be working towards something to get it done. I actually work a lot um, more intensely and a lot faster and better in a certain sense when I know I've got a deadline. When I'm making the work, I'm always thinking about them in kind of like groups, I'm sort of, um, uh, trying to fit together fragments of a narrative and then they're all sort of made within the same thought and they naturally belong together and then at some point I turn a corner and then what I'm making doesn't really belong with the same work. It's almost like um, every six months or every year something changes. In 2007 um, we had a fire in our apartment. This was uh, my ex-wife and I at the time. And uh, the person who started the fire was our neighbor um, who was dealing with uh, psychological trauma and mental illness. And he wasn't in the presence of mind at the time to realize that the fire that he had started in his unit would spread to the whole building and then we'd all lose our apartment where I also kept my studio. And. Um, uh, I was like, I don't know, like a month from my first solo show or something like that. So the timing was super inconvenient, you know, if, uh, to, to, as an understatement. I mean, for a lot of other reasons, it was inconvenient too. But um, life kind of resumed. But I was always thinking about where he, what happened to him, you know, afterward. It took about a year to find him. And then in about another six months to convince him to participate in this art project idea that I had. Uh, where I would interview him and we made him. Um, uh, took photos and made like a, a 3D model that was based on his likeness. I guess it was like an opportunity for some kind of reconciliation. Making a book with Maya um, and traveling for three months. It's a very good experience. I actually felt really intimidated when we started out because I actually don't work small very often. So we had to make something uh, small every day as we were traveling. Yeah, I think I like all the art that I made for like the first month I threw away. And then after like the first month I started making stuff that I was really happy with and we started to understand what the book was about, that it wasn't really about traveling, but it was about trying to understand what home means and like a search for home and then also some of the trauma that comes with losing your home. It made me focus even more intensely about like um, what it means to be living and making work and stuff where I do. I have to imagine that these, uh, that most of the refugees that we like came in contact with are still there, you know? So like, I come back to this and they're still there. It's hard not to feel 
like troubled by that in some way, you know? So then I think like that really informed not only how I was making the work, but what I was making work about. Right now what I'm doing is um, basically I'm watching Western films and then I'm taking stills from the, from the Westerns. And um, I just like, I really analyze them. So I'm trying to understand not just what's going on in the story of the film itself, but kind of what's going on psychologically on part of the filmmakers and then what, what the culture was at the time and what that reveals. What I'm really interested in is this kind of historically willed amnesia, sort of like it's easier not to turn and face history and look at it because there's so much ugliness that you're going to dig up that you'd rather avoid it. And I want to sort of like look at that and make art that sort of tries to reconcile with it at the same time that it tries to transform it or transcend that history, trying to make something that feels uh, authentic in some way. The work in many ways that I'm dealing with now actually does deal with whiteness, you know, and what that means. Because, I mean, most white people grow up not really thinking about themselves as being, uh, whatever their experiences are, uh, most of us like just grow up taking that for granted as like, that's the norm. We don't think about that there is no norm. And then you're kind of like, you put yourself through the eyes of a different person, like it, take it like a Western film, you know? You put your eyes through like the characters that are not the white characters, or what I'm working on right now actually are roles that um, are not white roles, but they're played by white actors anyway. And you see them like kind of like taking that, putting on that hat and basically trying to pretend to be something other. And that however it is that they pretend to be the other or think about the other, to some degree defines themselves to themselves. When I think about like how I fit into this, right? Like I, I align myself with what I call the colonist or the settler. So I'm a descendant of settlers. Like my family has been in North America for a long time and there's, um, there's a legacy that comes with that. And um, some of that legacy is troubling. So you, what does that mean now? Like all these generations later? Because I mean, it's really a, it's a big conversation right now. I mean, the conversation about race is something that's going on all the time and you start to feel a little like where do I you know where do I fit into this like am I part of the problem being like a contemporary white man like there is a lot of like kind of like awkwardness or confusion like knowing how to talk about this stuff and like sort of digging through that confusion is really what I'm after right now. You know, am I this legacy of this, um, you know, this like white Eurocentric art history that we're like all taught? Like, am I influencing it in some other kind of direct? Am I adding something essential to it? Or am I just a part of it, just merely a part of it, you know? And um, that's an open question. Like, I actually don't know the answer. I've got a lot of concepts that I deal with, you know, like I've got names for things and like for instance, one is uh, what I call the needed enemy, right? Like whatever, this is whatever the believer believes, the non-believer is necessary in order to have a certain depth of conviction. So the non-believer is going to tell you who you are and it's going to reconfirm that your own beliefs are that much truer. And so as I'm painting these two figures, um, when I'm folding them like this, they're actually like laying on top of each other, you know? So like whatever paint I poured or whatever, when I pull it back, there's something of the other that's now on the residue of the other. And then over the course of the painting, I'm really going to be looking for like, what is like the, the limitation of legibility and working this way? Are the figures by the end actually not gonna be there at all anymore? That'd be great, actually. Like if in the course of like making something that essentially started out figurative, that the figures disappear because of the effect that they had on each other to such a startling degree, you know? That could be great. What I'm gonna find in that though, I don't know. You know, that's like what you find is like the very quick limitations of reason that there's some point in this, you know, that this leads somewhere that you need, that's valuable. set up these like little platforms just if I found wood basically so it's like this platform that I can put the canvas on and it also doubles as like a little shelf and um, 
if you were to walk around the studio, you would just see them everywhere along every wall has these like low laying shelves and I can put my tools on there. I use um, a lot of combination of materials these days. That's why all these uh, paint cans are on here. It's actually latex paint, which is not um, uh, a traditional art material, um, but it can create, it can be um, uh, layered very quickly. I can put a lot of paint on it, it doesn't cost very much, and then I can easily peel it back up. Plus, whatever stays on the canvas will uh, crack in a way that I like. These tools are basically like ways of mixing paint. They're big palette knives and getting a lot of uh, paint on at once. Um, I can also like dig in under that way, so it's kind of like a knife digging stuff back out. I use these squeegees, I get them from Ikea. Basically, I use them mainly to prime the canvases. Um, but sometimes I'll use them again in the process. This is basically like a lot of research courses. This isn't actually very useful, don't get one of these. These are really cool though, because you can like take a lot of paint and just flat. Usually when I start, I try to have this all cleared off, so it's just the palette, but um, these are uh, brushes in various states of disuse. This is all my oil paint. Um, that's supposed to be organized, but I really just can't keep anything organized very well. And this is important, this is cold wax medium. I use that a lot uh, with the paint, uh, partially because it also creates like a little uh, bit of a skin texture that you can sort of pull back out as well. Um, and uh, it also creates a certain look where it feels like it has weight even though the wax itself is transparent. So it uh, creates a unique look there's no other way to get. I'm thinking about the paintings now more and more as uh, like an excavation site. Because if you're, if you're digging, right, metaphorically or physically, you're going back into the past. And with the paint and the layers and stuff that I'm doing now, as I'm adding, I'm also subtracting. So, um, uh, you know, I might like work several layers deep and only to like scrape it out later to see what was underneath. Um, it's kind of instinct that guides me there to decide when I should do that or not. But the overall kind of point of that is, um, to be able to show the history of the work so that actually the way that you're making the work isn't it isn't a style choice it's a content choice because style um, is met with limitations very quickly and uh, as you as one learns to paint one starts to pick up style and the next stage in that then is trying to unlearn those styles so that you can have something that feels authentic if it's an excavation site, it should have some kind of sense of discovery, meaning like I should be surprised by what I find, you know? And maybe it feels like picking at scabs or dead skin. It's like um, something that maybe you shouldn't do, but you do anyway. It's like forcing yourself to face something you don't want to face. And I, I don't know, I just think there's so much opportunity and beauty in that. And um, I'm trying to get closer and closer to that state when I'm making the work.